Meet Betty, a highly trained cell with an important mission, insulin production. Betty belongs to a group of cells in the pancreas called beta cells. Beta cells are the only cells in the body that produce and secrete insulin, a hormone that manages blood sugar levels. When beta cells are lost or do not produce enough insulin, diabetes develops. Luckily, beta cells live for a long time. In fact, we sometimes carry the same beta cells for decades. Now, while beta cells can experience many different states, there's only one accepted type of beta cell. But what do we mean by cell type? And why is it important? Well, a cell type is how we define cells. It can be determined by morphology, or how the cell's shaped, by cell surface protein expression, which is important for cellular communication, by cellular function, meaning a cell's job, by the transcriptome, which includes all the genetic outputs of a cell, and by epigenome conformation, the total set of epigenetic marks in cellular DNA. In our study, we asked a simple question. Are there different subtypes of beta cells with different functions? We searched specifically for epigenetic differences. Epigenetics helps cells maintain their identity over long periods of time. And we focused on H3K27 trimethylation, an epigenetic mark we previously showed is important in helping beta cells remember their identity. If beta cells lose H3K27 trimethylation, they forget who they are, they forget their identity, and this negatively affects insulin production. Without insulin, the body can't regulate blood sugar, and we get type 2 diabetes. So to answer our question, we measured a number of epigenetic marks and found that healthy beta cells seemed to be either low or high in H3K27 trimethyl levels. This was the first evidence that there are two epigenetically distinct beta cell subtypes. We called them beta high and beta low. To further explore the two types, we developed a technique called ScanSeq. ScanSeq measures protein levels inside and outside the cell, and it also measures the production of thousands of gene products from every single cell. Again, the results pointed to two major groups or types. Building on these findings, we found that high and low subtypes differ in their function, their size, their shape, mitochondria, and their epigenomic characteristics. We also found that we could recognize beta high cells from the outside because they expressed a protein on their surface called CD24. CD24 gives us an easy way to target and separate one subtype over the other and study each type one at a time. Importantly, we saw these subtypes in both mouse and human cells. We also found that beta high cells are increased in number in people with type 2 diabetes. Using some genetic tools, we showed that the dosage of H3K27 trimethylation can control the proportions of beta high and beta low cells. This suggests that epigenetic dosage offers a way to control subtype numbers and thus overall beta cell function. These findings could have implications for developing future diabetes treatment strategies. In summary, we identified two subtypes of beta cells, determined a reliable way to tell them apart, and pinpointed epigenetics as the driving force behind their differences. We hope these insights will help researchers find better ways to treat diabetes, maybe even by optimizing the ratios of those cell types.